friend of mine from a former job, Clo, won first place in a poster competition at a conference from a room of around 100 other PhD candidates. At the reception, after she received the award, uh, one of her peers told her that she had only won the prize because she was a girl and the committee wanted to look like they were being diverse, not because of a high standard of um, uh, work the poster represented. I met Clo over a year after this event uh, had happened, but the comment still upset her to the day. She's a great scientist and uh, deserves every bit of recognition she gets. Quite some time ago, I was invited to give a lecture at a conference. The date clashed with another invitation I had already accepted and thus proposed one of my senior research fellows for the invited talk. The answer I got by email was, I know he's an expert, but we will not get funding from the XX Society if we do not invite a woman. Sometime later, I was invited to be part of a PhD defense and again clashed, clashed with my agenda. I proposed a senior researcher in my group. You might guess the answer. I know he's a true expert, but we need to have a woman in the committee. After several of these events, nowadays when I get an invitation, I openly ask, are you inviting me because of my expertise or because you need to fill the quota? Extract from a longer story. I have felt many times that the way I looked was under scrutiny when I was presenting myself in a professional environment, way more than I considered appropriate. As a scientist, I always had to make an extra effort to look professional, not over nor, nor under dress, and even more so with makeup. Female scientists that look good are judged. Those who don't care about their appearance are also judged. Women do not have the freedom to give a talk with a Simpson or Metallica t-shirt or with crazy hair. They need to be perfectly balanced. Balance their look to start being listened to and taken seriously is another thing which is something that doesn't happen to male scientists. This is not a single time story, but a repetitive situation. As a woman, many times I have been considered incapable of doing physical work, or I have been treated as if I, if I couldn't do physical efforts. Sometimes it was directly said, or sometimes it was expressed as a compliment, as if it was very surprising to see a woman lifting five kilogram box. just a small excerpt from a longer story. And it is a story quite recent, just happened last week in the ICFO promoted Carla camp. The first day of the camp, we were divided into groups of four people with whom we could network and on the third day work together in the innovation workshop. My group consisted of two men and two women, including me. The other girl and one of the boys were younger than me by three and one year each. The other male was eight years older. From the beginning, the older male was the dominant talker in the group. He soon became interested in me as he said he had placed an application to EDICFO and wanted to know how the work environment was there and so on. I complied and talked a bit about my experience. Soon, the networking session was over and we could go back to the speeches. In the platform, there was an option to start a private chat with other participants. The older man previously mentioned opened a conversation with me asking for my profile on Facebook so we could keep in contact. I consider this as a part of networking, but suggested LinkedIn better as it is more professional and less personal than Facebook. But he insisted on Facebook, claiming that he didn't use LinkedIn. Trying to be nice, I complied again, although by now I did not feel very comfortable with it. He proceeded to add me, and then he liked a couple of the most recent pictures. My discomfort obviously grew. The chat proceeded by him bringing up my interest in martial arts as a hobby which could be seen in my profile. He told me that he also liked martial arts and he had a belt. I told him that was nice and he replied like, oh, so you know how to, def to defend yourself. Love, strong, woman. The last comment was just too much for me. I stopped answering altogether. Once in a conference, during a coffee break, I ended up in a conversation where there was one of the organizers of the series of conferences. At some point, the rest of the people in the group went for another cup of coffee and I was left alone with him. 
He then started telling me about the section in his personal website where he published photos of him with nice girls he met all around the world. He even had a subsection called Garden of Eden where he collected the photos with two girls. He told me that I was pretty and that he wished I could appear in his collection. Still, he said, it would have been better to take the photo on the following day, during the conference dinner, where I would have been a lot prettier. Luckily, that offered me a nice escape and, needless to say, I did everything I could to avoid him during dinner. I'm a male. A few years ago, I was in a conference dinner and a woman approached me to, take, to make small talk. I recognized her from the hotel lobby the day before when she arrived in company of a man and both made the registration together. In my biased mind, I thought, okay, they are a couple. He's coming to the conference and she joined him for some tourism. So, back with her at dinner and without giving any thought, I just spouted. So, you are here with your husband? To which she answered, no, I came here to present my work. I instantly became ashamed and apologized, having recognized how I had judged her and had been so biased about the whole situation. It's not a story about discrimination, but rather how a small change can have a huge impact. In Serbia, the majority of senior researchers are women. The reason is very simple. Serbia has generous, fully paid maternity leave and there are no career penalties for taking the entire leave, up to one year of time. 